So why is cheese fattening? It's high in calories, the fat adds to your body fat, it slows down your metabolism day by day, it doesn't have any fiber at all to control your appetite, it has a lot of sodium, so you're carrying two or three extra pounds of water, just making your knuckles a little bit smoother and making you, making you feel heavier and bloated. Can foods be addicting? Yes. There were some researchers at the University of Michigan, and they brought together 384 people, and they said to them, which foods give you problems? And, and what they meant was, which foods do you have trouble cutting down with? Which ones cause you to lose control? And just even when you're full, you're still having more, and it just can't stop. Well, the number five food was ice cream. Number four was cookies. Number three was chips. Number two was chocolate. And number one was pizza. And I'm going to argue that it's not the olives. <laughs> and it's not the crust. It's something about that gooey cheese melting all over it and piling higher. And is this not true? When you talk to people who go on a plant-based diet, they say, you know, this is really great, except I really, really miss cheese. What is it about this? What's going on here? But you might love cheese, but it doesn't love you back. It's fattening, it's addicting, and it causes lots and lots and lots of health problems, and people have really given it a pass. They've overlooked it. So what causes weight problems? You talk to other people about this, or you read a news article, and they will say it's soda. It's sugar. And soda, and these are not health foods. But I'm going to put a question mark as to whether that's the reason for the obesity epidemic that we have been seeing. Because if you look at sweetener consumption over time, it went up a bit over time. And as of 1999, it started falling. Because people started buying bottled water instead of sodas to a large degree. And if you look at cheese, where has that gone? Up and up and up and up. So where, which direction is obesity going? It's following the cheese. In the 1960s and 70s and 80s, fast food chains came in, pizza places came in, and so cheese became an ingredient in a lot of what people were eating from day to day. And by, by 2013, we were at 33 pounds of cheese every person every year. I'm not eating any, somebody else is eating 60. So I'm going to argue that it's fattening for several reasons. Number one, it's loaded with calories. And you probably know this already, but if you don't, this is my most important number. A gram of sugar has four calories. A gram of fat has nine calories. The leanest beef is about 29% fat. Chicken, not much better, about 23. Fish vary, some are lower, some are higher. Um, but if you look at plant foods, they're pretty low in fat, which is why they're not very high in calories. So where is cheese? 70% fat. If it were any worse, it would be Vaseline. So, OK, there is Coke Zero. So you could actually have a soda without any calories at all. But is there cheddar zero? I don't think so. All right. So secondly, fat in foods adds easily to your body fat. Here's what I mean. Let's say you ate a little bit too much bread. Would that go to body fat? Mm, not really, at least not at the beginning. The carbohydrate that's in bread breaks apart and it goes into your bloodstream and it powers your muscle activity. It powers your brain. It's the fuel that your body runs on. Let's say I overdo it. I eat a lot more. Let's say, I, let's say I'm an athlete and I'm, I'm carbo-loading. I'm eating lots and lots of bread and pasta. Does it go to fat? No. The reason athletes eat it, so much of it, is because it goes into their muscles and is stored as glycogen, which are batteries that you need when you're active. Also in your liver, it's stored, glycogen is stored there too. Now, theoretically, you can build fat from carbohydrates. But even if you ate the entire loaf of bread and it was more than you needed and your, your glycogen stores were all filled, if you made fat from it, even that, to make bread into fat is hard for your body. And it uses up about 25% or so of its calories just to try to make it. Now, on the other hand, cheese can go very easily to fat because it's already fat. It doesn't really require much of any conversion. You eat it, it goes into your blood, stores as fat. Very simple. Okay? Number three. 
Fat slows your metabolism. Here's what I mean. This is a muscle cell. And the reason I'm showing you a muscle cell is you hear people say, don't lose your muscle mass. Your, your muscles are your calorie burners. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, so inside your muscles are mitochondria. Do you remember the mitochondria from high school biology? Those are your calorie burners. You have a lot of them, but you also have little bits of fat. Now, doctors hate words like fat because it only has one syllable, so we'll call it intramyocellular lipid, but it's, it's fat inside your cell, and if you ate a little bit too much chicken fat or beef fat or Velveeta or fryer grease for that matter, the fat builds up inside your cell. When that happens, the cell says, fantastic, this is great. I've got some fat that I can store up, and if we happen to have a famine sometime, I'm sitting pretty. I got a lot of stored calories. Now, if the mitochondria burn it all up, it's gone. So when fat comes into the cell, the body turns down the production of mitochondria to keep the fat and your metabolism slows down to preserve this fat richness that just came in. And that's the opposite of what you want. You say, wait a minute, I just ate too much. Why are you storing it? You've got to get rid of it. The body was programmed a long time ago when there were such things as famines. So if you ate a big fatty thing, your body says, I'll keep that. And as the years go by, people's, the, the metabolism you had when you were 12 it's just no longer there because the mitochondria have been disturbed. So, if I'm on a low-fat vegan diet, time goes in the opposite direction. Okay, number four, cheese does not have fiber. Now, fiber is the most boring word in this lecture, I apologize. Fiber is big stuff, though. Fiber is plant roughage. It has effectively no calories. And so when I eat high-fiber foods, it fills you up, makes you think you've eaten a lot of foods, but the fact is you haven't really eaten very much. So fiber tricks the brain into thinking you ate a huge amount of food. But Velveeta has no, it's not a plant, it has no fiber at all, so every last calorie in it you get, okay? So here's the fiber. Baked beans have five grams, broccoli and other vegetables another five in a cup. An apple has about four, oranges three, bananas, brown rice, four grams. But cheese, none. Yogurt, none. Milk, none. Meat, none. Animal products don't have fiber. Okay, very simple. And fifth, a lot of people are not aware of this. Cheese has a lot of sodium. It's one of the highest salt foods that there, that, that there are. And it adds water weight. And so you can build up a couple of pounds of this. Now, an orange has sodium about a milligram in a typical orange, an apple about two, a cup of brown rice, maybe 20 or so, a potato, 13 grams of, uh, milligrams of sodium in a typical potato. Potato chips have the sodium added and they're up at 330. One serving of cheddar is 350 and a serving of Edam is 500 and Velveeta weighs in at over 800 milligrams of sodium in just one single serving. And so now let's compare the lacto-ovo vegetarians and the vegans. Um, I am going to argue that cheese is one of the biggest contributors to the extra weight that we see with the lacto-ovos and that difference is roughly 15 pounds. Make sense? Okay. So what the heck is cheese? Well, you start with milk. This is from uh, Widmer's uh, Cheese Factory in Teresa, Wisconsin. The milk comes in in the morning and they pour it in this big tub and then they add some bacteria. And that gives it that kind of funky smell um, because it's fermenting the sugars that are in the milk, the lactose sugar. Then they add rennet. And you know about rennet, this is the enzyme that is in the fourth stomach of a newborn calf uh, who is dead. And you remove the uh, rennet enzymes and plunk that in as well. Um, although, incidentally, um, that's, a, that's a rather expensive and cumbersome source, so almost all rennet now in most factories is, is a genetically modified. So the traditional places like Widmer's, they pride themselves on still using the, the calf. So then it coagulates and they drain out all the whey, which is this mixture of water and lactose um, and some other things. Then they uh, start to squeeze out the extra water and then you're left with cheese. And you add some salt to the top 
And what you have done with this process is taken liquid milk and made it solid. That increases the calories, concentrates the protein, increases the cholesterol and fat, and greatly increases the sodium. Ce jeune veau est né pendant la nuit. Il n'a que quelques heures et sa vie commence par un déchirement. À peine mis au monde, il est aussitôt arraché à sa mère. Des raisons économiques, il ne profitera pas du lait maternel, ne serait-ce qu'un seul jour. Sa mère est programmée pour produire du lait, pas pour nourrir des veaux, pas même le sien. Ce veau est tout tracé. Si c'est une génisse, elle connaîtra le destin de sa mère. Une vie de vache à lait pendant 5 ou 6 ans avant de finir en steak haché. Si c'est un mâle, sa durée de vie n'excédera pas quelques mois. 